In this lesson, we're going to continue to discuss Pages, the Pages panel, and a brand new feature in CS6 called Liquid Layout. In order to follow along, I would suggest changing your workspace to Digital Publishing, because the panels that we need are available in that workspace. If you'd like to follow along, go under the File menu to Open, and in the Sample Files folder, go down to 0310A, Pages, Liquid Layout, and then hold down your Shift key and just click on the layout that comes right after that. And just click Open. In order to use Alternate Layout to its fullest, you have to tell the feature how to resize the layout. You have to set up the rules that InDesign is going to follow in the resizing process. That's what Liquid Layout is all about. In order to use Liquid Layout, you have to switch to your page tool. It's the icon that kind of looks like a turned down page with a pointer immediately to its lower right. There actually is a Liquid Layout panel, and you can see by default, Liquid Page Rules have not been applied. It says off. Well, what does that mean? When I'm in my Page Tool, if I click and drag from any of these points around the bounding box of the page, watch what happens. It will temporarily resize the page. But nothing is happening to the content because I haven't told InDesign what rule to use for Liquid Layout. If I let go, the page snaps right back to its original size. If I actually wanted to resize the page, I would have to hold down my Option key on a Mac, Alt on a PC. But we're just using this to see a kind of a preview of what it might look like. Let's go through some of the liquid rules. If I click where it says Off and go to Scale, watch what happens if I make my page bigger. It's actually scaling all of the content in proportion. So this is going to work sometimes, but if the device is small enough, you're not going to be able to read the text. Let me snap right back to the original size. The next rule is called recenter. Watch what happens if I make my page larger. All it's doing is recentering the content. And if I go smaller, it's recentering it, but it's not fitting on the page. So the first two rules, they may work for some layouts, but they would have to be extremely simple layouts. Why don't we go to the next rule? Actually, why don't we skip object-based for now and go to guide-based? What is that about? Do you remember ruler guides from an earlier lesson? Well, if I click on any ruler and drag, I'm going to get a ruler guide unless I'm in the page tool. If I'm in the page tool, you can see that the guide is actually dashed. That is a guide for guide-based liquid page rules. And the way it works is if that guide cuts through any object, when you resize the page, a vertical guide will allow that object to resize horizontally. And you can see that's the only thing that's changing at this point. It could be, maybe that's the only thing I want to change. But let me let go. I'm going to add one other rule in the vertical direction, which will now allow the picture to resize as well, as well as the logo. Let me do it. I'm just going to click and drag and see what happens. And you can see my picture is actually getting bigger. Everything is resizing nicely, but only in the one direction. What would happen if I made it vertically taller? You can see. It's not resizing the objects unless I make it wider. Let me snap back into that original position and recenter my page. I'm going to drag a couple of more horizontal guides on, one through the headline, one that goes through my text frame as well as my picture, and one that goes through my logo down the bottom. Let me make my layout just a little bit smaller on my screen by hitting Command or Control hyphen. So we'll be able to see what's going on as I resize. Well, that's actually working pretty well. 
course, I'm going to have to do some tweaking. If I make it smaller, I'm starting to lose my logo. You can see that. It's only meant to give you a head start when using alternate layout. And you're probably going to use different rules for different kinds of layouts, depending on which one's going to work better. Let me go to my other layout, which is 0310-B. And this layout is a little bit different. To get started, I'm going to click with my page tool on my page. The liquid page rule that I want to use is object-based. Why don't we just start clicking on each one of the objects in this layout individually to tell the rule how we want it to work. Like, for instance, if I click on my headline, you can see it gets highlighted in this bright red thick stroke. In my liquid layout panel, I have a bunch of choices to make. Do I want to resize this text frame with the page? Probably. Let me give it a shot. I'm going to change it in the height and the width. Now, the next section is called Pin. I want you to pay attention to this little circle off to the left side. If I click Pin Left, what it's doing is it's maintaining this space to the left side of my headline. So when I resize the layout, the left side of that text frame is going to maintain that same distance to the edge of the page. I probably would also want to maintain the space above my headline. So let me click Top as well. Now, let me continue by clicking on this text frame. And you can see before I start doing anything, all of these little circles all the way around the frame are not colored in. To the interior of the frame where there are these dashed lines, you can see that the height and the width is actually locked. It will not resize right now. So, but as soon as I click on height and width, instead of locks, there's these little spring-like objects that are part of the guide letting me know that it's going to be flexible in that direction. Now, because this object, the text frame, is to the left, I'm probably going to want to pin it to the left side. But what about my picture? Right now, the picture, if you look at the guides, is locked in both directions, and it's not pinned anywhere. So I want it to resize to the width and the height. And I might possibly want to pin it to the top, left, right, and bottom. So it's going to resize perfectly with the page. And then there's my logo. Let me click on my logo. Obviously, it's towards the right side of the page. Maybe I should pin it that way. And I'm not going to resize my logo. I'm just going to pin it. Let's see what happens. Once again, I'm going to zoom out away from my layout by hitting Command or Control hyphen. So when I resize the page, you'll actually be able to see what's going on. And that is working kind of nicely. You can see I can go to a horizontal shape and I'm not losing anything. My logo is actually working out pretty well, but it looks like I'm losing part of my headline. I have to make it tall enough that I'm not going to lose my headline. So you're obviously going to have to make some adjustments after you go to the Pages panel and set up your alternate layout. We'll continue to discuss layouts in the next lesson.